Hello and welcome back to the next video in the Functional Analysis series. Now in this new part 34 we are still talking about spectral theory. In particular today we will discuss the so-called spectral theorem for compact operators. However, as always before we start, I really want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady via PayPal or by other means. And please don't forget to download the PDF version and the quiz of this video on my webpage. The link for this you find in the description of this video. Ok, then without further ado, let's start with the topic of today. It's the spectral theorem of compact operators, also often called diagonalization of operators. So you see, here we will generalize the result from linear algebra, which tells us that some matrices are diagonalizable. Indeed, in linear algebra, this works for self-adjoint or even normal matrices. Therefore, we will do the same here, so we consider a Hilbert space X. And in order to make the statement a little bit clearer, we will choose a complex Hilbert space. And then, of course, what we then need is a compact operator T defined on this Hilbert space X. So please recall from the last video what the definition of a compact operator is and what we know about the spectrum of such operators. Ok, but now in addition, we also want that T is a self-adjoint or normal operator. Now, if you don't know the definition anymore, please check out part 32. But maybe as a short recap, self-adjoint means that T star is equal to T and normal means that T star and T commute. In other words, T star T is the same as T T star. Ok, and now with these assumptions here, we can formulate the spectral theorem of compact operators. However, first let's look back at linear algebra again, where we know that a normal matrix or a self-adjoint matrix has a lot of eigenvectors. Indeed, it's possible to choose an orthonormal basis for the vector space just with these eigenvectors. And now it turns out that we can also have a similar thing in an infinite dimensional case. However, there we first just get an orthonormal system. It's a set of vectors that are pairwise orthogonal and have length 1. And let's call the vectors EI, where lowercase i comes from an index set capital I. Hence, we can write the whole orthonormal system in this way. Ok, now in general we can have two different cases here. Either the index set is infinite but countable or it's a finite set. Therefore, we can summarize that and write that i is a subset of the natural numbers. Hence, please remember here, a finite orthonormal system is allowed here. Ok, so you see, these vectors EI should be the eigenvectors of our operator T corresponding to some eigenvalues of T. And these we can put into a sequence and call lambda i. Hence, in general, this could also be a finite sequence. However, the zero vector should be never in this sequence. So we have a sequence, a finite or an infinite one, in C without zero. And from the last video, you should know if we have an infinite sequence, it should converge to zero. This was one property of the spectrum for compact operators. Ok, and with this we have fixed eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And now we can use both things to write our operator T in a diagonalized form. But first I should mention that we can split our Hilbert space X into two parts. On the one hand we have the kernel of T, so all the vectors that are sent to zero by the operator T. And on the other hand we have everything the eigenvectors EI span. However, in the case we have infinitely many vectors in our orthonormal system here, we have to change something. In fact, we just have to close the set here given by the span. So you know, this overline here denotes the closure of the set. However, at this point you should also ask what do I mean with this circuit plus sign here. Indeed, it's not so complicated, I just mean the orthogonal sum of two subspaces here. Moreover, I can tell you, some people also add such a perpendicular sign to the plus to emphasize that. In fact, the concept is not so complicated, 
it just means that both subspaces here are orthogonal to each other and that they span together the whole space X. Okay, so maybe to remember it, let's put the definition here in the corner. So if you write the Hilbert space X can be written as U plus V, it means it means for each vector x in x, there is a vector u and v. Of course, they come from the corresponding subspaces. And we have them such that we have two properties. First, x can be written as u plus v. Now there you see, this should explain why we use the plus sign in this notation. And on the other hand, we know that u and v should be orthogonal to each other. However, what I also should emphasize here is that the choice of u and v here is uniquely determined. So this means that the spaces u and v are indeed orthogonal to each other. So the only intersection they have is the zero vector. Okay, maybe that's good enough for the explanation of this symbol. Let's continue talking about the spectral theorem of compact operators. As mentioned before, it should tell us that our operator t can be written in their diagonal form. However, then the question arises, what does it mean in this abstract form here? Now maybe it will not surprise you that we can use the eigenvectors to describe our operator. For this, now let's go through the whole index set with an index k and form the sum. And then we should have eigenvalue lambda k times eigenvector ek. And then we only have to add one factor here, namely the projection to our eigenvector ek. So we want to project onto this direction given by the eigenvector ek. So we have the inner product of ek with any vector. And you see, I write this in this strange order here, such that you can remember the operator t can be written as the sum lambda k ek ek. And then of course, we can just apply t to vector x and then we have the given formula here. And now you know, this formula now holds for any vector x in our Hilbert space x. In particular, now we know, in general, this sum here converges with respect to the norm in x. And as always, the norm in x is given by the inner product in x. Okay, there you see, this is the spectral theorem now, because it tells us that every operator t can be written in this form now. Here also the last video helps where we have discussed the spectrum of compact operators. In particular you should know from this we can conclude that lambda k is an eigenvalue and e k a corresponding eigenvector. And please note here what we have here is that we can choose the eigenvectors as an orthonormal system. This is possible because we have self-adjoint or normal operators. Okay, now in order to close this video, let's state a fact about the operator norm of t. Indeed, here it turns out that we can calculate the operator norm of t by simply using the eigenvalues of t. So we just have to consider the largest eigenvalue we have here. So more precisely, we can write that we look at the supremum of the absolute value of lambda k. So in summary, we see all the information of the operator t is already given in the eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors. That's all we need to describe the whole operator. Okay, then I would say, let's discuss this spectral theorem for applications, examples and maybe some proofs in the next videos. So let's meet there and have a nice day. Bye.